King admires the inventors that address the needs of our time. It seems like they just sort of pop up out of nowhere, just when we need them. So he always admires those that are actually inventing. So please welcome Keith Bailey and Wow Bailey. <coughs> Seminal, seminal moments. Those moments in our lives that will forever change the course of our path and our destiny. One of mine occurred in the fourth grade. I moved to the United States about a year ago from Holland, fresh Dutch boy. And our teacher, Mrs. Merrick, who's this old cratty woman, I'm sure at the time was like 35. <laughs> who had a disposition to come across as really intimidating, but she had an absolute heart of gold. And she challenged us, empowered us, encouraged us to present a book report before the class. Costumes optional. So being from another country, I decided I would research Christopher Columbus. And I employed my mother who was a phenomenal seamstress. I dutifully read the books on note cards and big fat letters. I wrote out word for word exactly what it is I wanted to communicate. And my mother made the costume. I can feel it on me to this very day. Normal shoes, purple tights, big pumpkin shorts. Tight shirt, purple and gold, with a big poofy shoulder. She even made the hat to go with it with a purple feather. Uh -huh. I was dressed the part. And when I came marching into that fourth grade class, the entire class erupted into laughter. <laughs> Pretty sure they were laughing with me. <laughs> I stood before this class and I delivered one of the best book reports any fourth grader has ever delivered to the laughter and applause of everybody at the end. Pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Merrick was so taken by this moment that she took me by the hand and paraded me through Corinth Elementary School. And I spoke to the fifth graders, Mrs. Smart's class. And I spoke to the third graders, Mrs. Huddleston's class. That was a seminal moment for me. Because forever, for that moment, <clears throat> I knew that the stage was the place for me. I touched lives. Some things have changed since then. Well, I'm still in costume. <laughs> Less the puffy pants. <laughs> for a long time, I still took the time to write things out word for word. Who here, raise the hands, who, when they prepare a speech, sits down at a typewriter or at their keyboard and starts writing things out word for word? Let's talk about that for a moment, shall we? <laughs> writing for reading and writing for speaking. When we write for reading, we want to make sure that we have all the exclamation points and we use very colorful words and the punctuation is correct and it's meant to be read. When we write for speaking, it is vastly different because the words that come out of our mouth oftentimes are sentence fragments, but it's only 70% of, of our communication. 93% of our communication is voice inflection, it's body movement, it's gestures, it's our posture, it's our timing, it's our pausing. That's the biggest part of how we communicate when we're on this stage. And I've thought about this for a very long, long period of time. We think in pictures, we don't necessarily think in sentences. So why do we sit down and write in sentences for something that's going to be delivered in a completely different format. And this has vexed me many, many times. And while I sit and think about this, things have changed. I've been a member of Toastmasters for seven years. When I wrote my first speech, my icebreaker, I remember, I remember the first lines, and after that I can't remember a damn thing. <laughs> the first line is, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday! May 1st, 1972, I was born. I don't remember what I wrote after that, but I do know what I spoke to. I remember the picture. I remember the picture of me on stage and, and going back and forth through the audience and telling the story of how I came from Holland here to the United States. And I can tell that similar story again, but not word for word, because we think in pictures, not in words. 
So over the course of seven years, and having become a professional speaker, and I've worked with speaking clients such as yourself, there's a certain things that have come to be. So what I want to share with you today, it's called WOW with one word. And it's really specifically designed in this case for personal story. That's what we're getting into today is personal story. First man I want to tell you about is Albert Einstein. One of my favorite quotes from him is, you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And there's a word highlighted here and it's simply. For all the presentations I've ever written, for all the clients that I've ever worked with, I can always boil it down to one word. What is the one word that encases the message you're trying to deliver? What is the one word that you want everybody to walk away with? President Clinton, I don't care about your political views, but President Clinton, on his second acceptance speech, spoke about building a bridge to the future. We're going to do this, this, and this, and that will build the bridge to the future. And to build the bridge to the future, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And over the course of about a 15-minute presentation, he said building a bridge to the future some 30-odd times. That means about every 30 seconds, he said it once or twice. And when everybody left there, they were all pumped up and jazzed. Like, oh, what did the president talk about? We're going to build a bridge to the future. How are we going to do that? I, Children, I know children are part of it. Infrastructure, that we're, we're building a bridge to the future. And it's because he kept hitting upon that point. We know this as circular reference, right? We're going to start off with something, and then we're going to filter down, we're going to come back through that point again, back through that point again. And that's how our audiences remember things, right? Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you've told them. So when you write, think about, or even start with, one word and write from there. The second thing that has influenced me is my time in improv. And there's a few tenets in improv that are so powerful. And improv is a game. You stand together, you play this game, and you have to have these tenets together. And the first tenet is actually won by a gentleman named Allen Ginsberg, who's a poet. And it's first thought, best thought. First thought, best thought. The first thing that pops into your head is oftentimes the best thought you're going to have. The second part of it is that first thought that's in your head, if you deny your mind that and say, nah, nah, nah give me something better, we experience this in table topics, right? Somebody says something to you, something pops into your head, and you're like, nah, oh, I can't think of anything. No, you did think of something. But because you denied your mind and said, no, but, which is the greatest way to end a conversation, <laughs> even with yourself. If you say first thought, best thought, and then you write on it, you speak on it, you think on it, your mind's going to give you more gifts. The second one I just mentioned it is yes and. Yes and is incredibly powerful. Businesses should adopt this, especially upper level management. Yes and says something. It says, I hear what you're saying, and I'd like to add to the top of that. Yes and. So first thought, best thought, and yes and. The third component is design thinking. Now design thinking was initially coined by a company called IDO. And IDO, what they basically do is they, they get a problem on the board and then they have a group of people, everybody sits down, they put post-its on there and they add to the yes and the hell out of it. And they just keep adding to it and eventually they start through and they start to filter the whole thing. I've taken all of this and I've condensed it, I've reformulated it, I've tweaked it, I've thought on it, I've yes and it, I've first thought it, and what I've created is a game called WOW. And on all of your tables is a mat, and it's called the game mat. And this is, incorporates the design thing as far as format's concerned. You also have little post-its. Because something magical happens in our minds when I say words, or when we say words, pictures appear. So we're going to play this game. We're going to play really, really fast. First, I'm going to show you how the whole thing works. Let's say I were to say the word Mexico. Ever used to take a trip to Mexico? Whether it's the news, whether it's, a, whether it's an actual destination, a location, we all just went to Mexico. For me, when I played this game right before I came out here, when I thought about Mexico, I thought about uh, Wales. And in Wales, I was like, oh, I remember the time I went to Mexico, and I, we got in this Zodiacs, and it had the big engines on the back, and you're sitting on like this, this, this round thing, kind of a rodeo stuff, you want to put the hand up, and these had 
dual engines on these light zodiacs and you went out into the ocean and there were like 10 other boats out there and you were whale watching. And the way the whale watching happened is as soon as a whale, somebody like, whale! The guy was like, Broot! and all the boats would converge on the whale and then we'd watch. That's whale watching in, in Mexico. <laughs> Another thing I also thought about was scuba diving. I remember seeing a tornado of fish as I went diving. I saw bull sharks. The next thing popped in my mind, like, what else? What else was about Mexico? Oh, yeah, tequila. <laughs> Not so many thoughts that come after tequila. It just kind of starts with tequila and ends with tequila. <laughs> so we're going to play a quick exercise for all of us here. You all have a post in front of you. I'm going to give you a word. You're going to take 30 seconds. It's all I'm going to give you. 30 seconds. First stop, best stop, and yes and the hell out of it. You ready? You're going to write like one or two words on the post-it, stick it on the, on the table, and then write one or two words and do this as fast as you can. You guys ready for the word? Snow. Go. Back three. Head back up again, guys. Head back up. That's 30 seconds. It goes by fast. I do these exercises on a regular basis. I usually give myself four to five minutes. This is how I write all of my presentations now. Every single speech that I write is written this way. All right, snow. Carrie, what's the first thing you thought of? Cold. Cold? Kind of like right now, you're all bundled up. You look really, really comfortable. You look snuggled up. Jeremy, what'd you think of? Ski. Ski. Nancy? Ski. Ski as well? Awesome. Awesome. Snow is awesome. Did you guys all get like pictures in your head and things just popped in there? And your brain lights up and it tingles. Whenever we write, we see that cursor just blinking at us. And we get what's called writer's block. I encourage all of you, the next time you have to write a presentation, you have to tell a story. Think of the one word that encompasses that entire story or the thing that you need to speak to introverts. Right? Put introverts at the very top, and then for five minutes, with post it, just everything you could possibly think of, and just write it all down. You'd be amazed the gifts that your mind gives you. The gift that my mind gave me in this case was this story that I told, that I shared with you today. It's the entire story about me being Christopher Columbus. In addition to that, this was part one. I'm going to come back again in the near future, and we're going to go into part two, which is this piece. It's called design facilitation. This entire presentation that you just enjoyed is all written right here. From audience participations to slides to stories. So the next time that you sit down to write, remember, with one word, you'll paint a picture. And the picture paints thousands. Sixty seconds on the